Is this one you don't win? It's all you. It's all me? Yeah. Hi, everybody. Lion. To begin, the lion, all bulk and missing for years. Its huge face, no chapel, no hill, no little gate leading to the forest, only lion about to speak of a place where images reside, like something sacred in something missing. My mouth changes people. Cupcakes, elves, aliens, or perhaps a favorite celebrity. These have little to do with me. I'm full of them as much as they are full of cupcakes, elves, aliens, or perhaps a favorite celebrity. They live through my roar, my magnificent teeth, the natural disaster of my presence. I used to believe my job was to help save people from being lions, but now I see the lion's coat, its open mouth, my invitation to step upon its pillowish tongue, then oh, so dark presidium. The inseparable return that knows no contest with inside a lion, only transformation to wake, to breathe so deeply through shivering morning's choice. Giant nests over the black city. Dreaming that her belly was an elephant heart plum and that choke cherries were embedded, embedded in her lower guilt, she thought of justice, loved him, and did not go inside. The day before the dead Mabel burned, they formed an equilateral triangle. The youngest man, a trifle overweight, too anxious for his age, completed his circle and stood by the door, ashamed as usual in orange ruled the world. At first she felt like a girl band in trouble. Every hit, a voice in her head, lowering her lip made of black marble. Black and clean yet today, from the spyglass up in the old tree, the marble in the middle of her desert was hundreds of miles away. It was back in her room, with her gone for pizza, that he initially found himself alone, crying, looking around, admiring her tastes, wondering whether to bring her flowers, they stayed restless, read in the newspaper a few decades later how at that time crime was at an all-time low, but he still wouldn't go to the old wooden hotel because it was quiet except for the throb of the waves. All crockery and repertory bunk, he made his name as a professional thief of handbags until he found himself listening to an uninterrupted hour of chatty remarks about her panorama. Then suddenly she appeared hazy, halfway focused, a murmur passed the docks of the gates of the black city where watery boys hoist gunny sacks and shout to each other. She just foundered and foundered, saying exactly what their parents would have said if they were moody and bored with silver stars. She would bound for the next new crescent, ride it through the night where at least she wouldn't have to hear his questions. Did you not fear for your mother? The girl was young when she did lived the green exterior disguises a woman uses to know herself somewhere between childhood and the main reason he dragged her into the bright beach house to the albatross that killed their parents. Really, there's not much to tell. The squawks made them. His father had not meant to abuse them, had not meant to since 1927. But divers searching for drowned children and drowned mothers swear they've seen their evidence like cats in a prison recreation hall, falling from favor or grace from some high artifice. Down they dropped like discredited predicates to through what was then called a poor boy and girl left on their small shelf next to a half-finished cup of do not divide or die. Years after the story's death caught both of them off guard, their differences grew like drunk lightning. Their arms reached out across the bed like a sky full of clear buttons, its air surveyed for progress. Erosion was the greatest threat to the stability of how their parents got caught in that car engine and blew up. Seduced by yesterday, they looked up each other's looks and up further into the big tree out front to see these gigantic nests left behind the size of black sofas, but in a frayed wool sweater with sword splitting consequences, she undermined his ability to cope with what a bullet could do. One catastrophe af after another, her mother said meaning her. She drank single malt out on the porch and leaned towards the ocean. She said to him, before you go, light a cigarette under the old red maple in the front yard, under this hunter's moon, and take a last look so you won't have to change.
after the late show. Warm room, cold night, loud morning stares, where I never was anyone else who didn't do it and was not also done to, so marvelously, so cold out there still. Christmas letter to a dead friend. Choices continue who I am. Interdependency hangs human and thinks of you. The only imposition to this damn cold morning doesn't know either what will happen next or how long the eagers of perfection will crack silly upon their own securities. By the way, it snowed pretty hard last night, so thanks for the Tennessee sip and cider and the lights. Oh, the lights. How I wish you could see them. A gospel to get you through. One. All gospels before this aren't as good. This is how language works. How a sound makes nothing so powerful as a human listening. This is not the writer, but what the writer does. Inspired. Two. When did following without vision become a thing? Even when Orpheus or St. Paul were blind, they weren't without vision, without regrets. Three. I am a gospel. I have a gospel too, to give to you. Where you are not attached, I love the most. Four, like antiquated technology or getting excited by a zipper, this is as real as love. As real as the heart that runs your head is very much alive. I love you fits the same intent. Five, there are gospels and there are gospels. Some believe, some will not care. This is the word of the Lord. Six, no. This is the word of the Lord. This, and this, and this. Just as real as God is a convenient place to put things, a convenient place to edit. Seven, there is room for everything I allow. This is the gospel of finally wide enough for us all. God's bitten fingernail, way too big still, not enough. meaner than tomorrow. I stare blankly across the room, a crumb of sleeping pill, a dandelion to find the rain, the mud of the sweat off a pair of beat up wings, resuscitating a lonely paper bag whose bruised road tips fall like a friend on fire, suffocating gray beauty supposes death a more spiritual thing, where God fits like a bomb shelter, vast erasures endure. Boys don't cry at Washington Square. So strange hearing your favorite music, lightly like a blister of rubber buttercups. How quiet it is without the one who taught me to fuck it, saying yes, and yes, and yes. Taking each one out to your favorite videotape, you grabbed my hand, smushed it to your padded left breast, kept bringing up how great it would be if only I asked when we could run downhill again. Straight as crystals delivering summer, Head run with so much blood, looking round to ensure our parents wouldn't walk in, planning later to meet at our favorite dying mall to compare what's left at the food court. Unfair realism. Those skinny, gray-white, eye-pot trees, bunches of them spread the forest. The old lasta ox of General Eisenhower ran ahead. Creamy peanut butter, cheese curls, applesauce cups, a well-loved cassette found at the hardware store. I never held a gun before. Was surprised and a bit ashamed you had. Real good, too. The only person outright my mother forbid me to see. Dark and wet, somehow belonging exactly where you were found. Back when pickup doors were a bit harder to shut. The cornfield, the old highway, its main road so far out, neighbors still waved to one another, even through brights. I remember the cold roses in your face.
sometimes the God's honest truth smells like menthols. I remember large peach, peach blossoms and crystal water glasses. Someone who wanted to say something pretty about my lips. How awkward and boysenberry he must have thought I was. Said I could look anywhere but a busted hazel eye. Played spades for hours in pale blue silk with a few heavy guards until truthfully, I think he was the fifth guy to really see me naked. Said he was paying for the beauty lost in his youth to violence. Staring so quietly, he wore no rings, and I actually thought if I could do this, stripping would be easy, you know? I could have a way better life for me and the kids where I could be adored by whomever I wanted. Also, because I've never been on a boat made of so much money, nor smoked such swanky cigarettes above clear water with no sky, I can still hear him muttering, just slightly, don't come any closer, I'm infantilizing a strangle. Don't come any closer, I'm infantilizing a strangle. Afterwards, he was real sweet and offered me a trap door crumpled into couplets, bare as a new room in front of an absolute stranger I always knew. This kind of thing would happen to me, you know? The dough I got will help too. It'll almost pay for Christmas this time and about half my criminal justice degree. <laughs> Ninety days after the first cicada, her stolen mother's holiday perfume, his older brother's oversized suit coat, the river on the other side of town. He originally stopped to light a candle and beg for things not to happen. She imagined they'd eventually belong somewhere old and important, fresh towels on the loose. The boy's hand, at the same time, ordinary lion's heart. Just a smidgen more up the road there, which he couldn't help but let the old pole cut out, and it ran for miles and miles. The path to Kernanos. Fungible reality. My Hearn Hill won't be your Hearn Hill. Even though I met you there, antlers in our hair. Obvious with alignment, confidence, honor, attentiveness, organization, sensitivity. Their intensely empty horn mitigates those who listen, experience this actually, symbolically, demonstrated by necessity, left to one of the psionics of the no longer, which are anything but singular, even when experienced as such. Poem in the style of Jack Spicer if he was a Radio Shack assistant manager who also played a and <laughs> Radio waves can still be picked up in the dark forest. There are no angels left. There are no angels right. No matter the distance, left alone, a radio is still a radio. Like the number 20 on a die goes missing, but still occupies the same space. A radio has its purpose even after it's taken apart, its constituent pieces lay a catalog. But what happens when the pieces rearrange the person, rebuilding themselves by themselves, when they again lose the magic weapon they use far too often, checking neither manual nor character sheet can help you now. To stare ahead, as if into oblivion. Lost in a monstrously uploaded position, red locks radiate in the afterglow. A sleek, nickel-hard case holds concept as the penetrated sky threatens full release. Buck Rogers sets his jaw and eyes wide, clears, clears with the tradition that a conqueror attends. Kill him all to death, she frosts. Proof against outside noise erupts. The red light continues to blink lazily. As Princess Ardala's really good dem demolition demonstrates, any mantle can spout iridescent effluvia. Its ride induces a tingly sensation like freefall. In the near null gravity, Buck thankfully remembers to make sense of the circling stars, simply allow the locust.
the relatively distant time of our intimacy. The pleasure of security's delirium hides from us the look of what awaits. What ritual can fix this weighty innocence? What green water could scatter rudder enough to cleanse this overgrown tomorrow full of shoulds? Pink heavens flutter in the winter wind. Mammoth motherly moths of disorderly design. Behavior itself is an enormously integral part of the accumulative sun of time and action. Like one can't tell who's dreaming and who's to be glorified like I glorified brown and served rolls. By fucking by thunder, the stomach acid he takes. Of all these weights I used to have efforts to stack upon the instrumental plumage of such a silent musician. Han Solo action figure. Like all my fuck ups are made of honey just beyond evil. You look at the killing design of my hand and wonder, confident seat of pants and a flashy build your stole. How will I use the stars? And in what sequel will you be just another ghost that fell from my trigger? Safely, safety broken off long ago by an iconically settled later. In a reminiscent future, I'm right down to how it works. Utility through the most dangerous situations. Precious because my entire vehicle dresses so well with goodbye. At first, there are conflicts and robots and awkwardly close. Then the dark out there presents an unfavorable politics that promises to standardize relations with reputable chaos. And after I suffer a loss that not everyone makes it through, I righteously hotshot the universe and upgrade myself to legend.